Hi everyone. This is the Hoboken Historical Museum's live stream. We are um, here at 1301 Hudson Street, Uptown Hoboken, and tonight we're we're doing the old switcheroo. Tonight we're having the artist talk for the new art um, the upper gallery uh, show that's opening on Sunday on a Thursday night, and then tomorrow on Friday we'll have Hoboken talks. I'm Rand Hoppy. I'm I'm sitting at the computer. Um, making sure this the show runs well but i am not here for the uh for the duration of the show um but uh, let me i'll just in, introduce that we you know it is hoboken studio and garden paintings by bill current and it's opening sunday july 2nd and uh it's it's a great show um and it runs through august 6th and bill is here and he's going to be talking to maggie hinders and um well, let's let's head over, and uh, ha I'll hand it over to those guys, and they can they can start it up. Hi, Bill. It's nice to see you. Hi, Maggie. You too. Oh, Thank okay. you. Yes. Well, since we're since we're talking, let's talk. Um, I'm going to start off by saying, if you don't mind my saying it. You are a fixture of Hoboken life. How does living in Hoboken influence your painting? I think living in Hoboken influ influences my painting in the sense of the l more that I've lived here, the longer that I've been here, the more that I see, the more things that seem to be want wanting to be painted. Uh, I see more of the beauty mm -hmm. or just the beauty in general. Yeah. And just to be clear, I didn't see the, um, on the opening thing, the reception, please do come. It's from 2 to 5 on Sunday. That didn't say that in the sign. But oh. yeah, did I answer the question? Yes. We have a um, uh, comment. Hi, Liz and John. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. Congrats. We are online with you. Thank you for the invite. Nice. That's Liz and John in uh, the Hamptons. Thank you. Hi, Valerie. Hi, I'm Valerie. So, Bill, these are um, your wonderful paintings behind us. I haven't seen some of them, and I was there for the creation of other ones. Um, what, uh, well, what about um, Hoboken Studio and Gardens? What is the um, difference between painting in the studio and painting uh, outdoors in the garden? Um, um, I had some help with the title, but what I realized was that when I looked at my work for the show or if I could have a show I noticed that I had paintings from the studio mm -hmm. and I've also liked to be I like now to do paintings plein air which are done outside mm -hmm. so um, that kind of started the the motion to put the show together and um, uh, I've always used my studio. At, I, I've always painted in my studio. My apartment is my studio. I've never had a studio other than my apartment, although if anyone knows of a studio, we, I might consider it. Um, <laughs> Get that I pigeon. like windows. Yeah. Um, I have the best views in town. I live downtown. Um, so I've, I think I've painted from every room in my apartment. Um, but then... Um, the difference is, or what happened was, I think prior to COVID, I met you, mm -hmm. Maggie. Maggie is also a wonderful painter. And um, we connected and we started to paint, I think it was outside at uh, the community garden on 6th yes, and yes. Garden. And we did a lot of work there. Three, we, we met for three years. And, um, oh, and uh, we, um, oh, we met every Monday, Rain or I'm shine. I'm sorry, that might be me. That's quite all right. We will fix it right away. <laughs> terribly sorry. This is. That's can, quite all right. This is live. This is live. <laughs> As you can tell. Okay. Off. Okay. And. This is Liz. Liz, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Liz sorry. says, Hi, Bill. I'm here with Matthew Willinger. We love, love, love your paintings. We can't wait to come to your opening on Sunday. That's exciting. Thank you so much, both of you. And Great. 
So, did I answer that question? Yeah, you did. And I have a follow-up or something, another comment about it anyway. Because um, you and I began painting together during the pandemic. And it might have been, I might have, we, we might have agreed to do that um, during your last show, when I came to see your last show here. Mm. I'm not really sure. I think you had a show during the pandemic. Uh, yes. And if not now, when? That was the title of it. Yes. I remember that now. But... In the over three years since then, we've painted together a lot. And um, remember wearing masks and painting outdoors and all that? So um, I just wanted to say um, that, Bill, you've helped me a lot uh, to sort of rediscover plein air painting. I was completely a studio painter, and now I go outdoors a lot. And uh, she's good. Really, <laughs> stop it. Really had a. a really had a, a, a wonderful experience that came out of our painting together. And likewise, you do, seeing you do your work would make me think, well, maybe I could try this. Or sometimes you pushed me and you said, well, no, maybe it doesn't work. Try this. So it, it's so good. I just heard a quote this week and it said, if you want to start painting, make a date with someone <laughs> to go paint yeah. because it, you know it's hard to cancel it well hopefully you won't cancel but when you make a date with another artist to go be creative mm -hmm. you got to show up yeah and you start thinking about you start thinking about painting more because right. you have that other energy working towards um, working towards getting something going oh this is Audrey hello Audrey the Hi. plain air paintings are beautiful can you tell me about the paintings behind you? Thomas and Audrey. Hello, Thomas and Audrey. Should I? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Let's wait, start with something. The now. paintings behind us, and we'll go to close-ups um, in a few minutes. Th uh, there are like about five walls in the exhibition space. If you've never been, I hope you can make it to the wonderful Hoboken Historical Museum. The wall behind us might be the opening wall. It it has paintings of the uh, views from my window, which I consider my garden. It's my mm -hmm. landlady's garden. This is my landlady's rose bush. And there's a funny story with this. You see that? It's a little robin. Uh -huh. While I was painting that, a robin had flew somewhere, and I was like, I wish if it if it only flew there well it didn't really fly there it was on the chimney which is in another section so i transposed it into here and that's called the rose bush and the robin um, oh. this is at the wonderful community garden sixth and garden the community church garden it's run by a uh, carter craft it is so beautiful, beautiful there that's I where maggie to walk through there yeah. maggie and i go quite often to paint it's like a little away. It's like our own Brooklyn Botanic Garden, and we're always looking for volunteers to help in the garden. And I'll just say, lastly, um, the one that's on the far left. Those are marigolds. Um, marigolds were my first um, flower that I grew and got turned. Got that got I got turned on to I don't know if that's the right word but more to the point I think this was a bad bat Maggie I think you had to go to the hairdresser so we only had a half hour oh and oh, yeah these marigolds were in the front of my uh, home where I've lived for many years and that's also a studio but I think I had like maybe a half hour to do those marigolds because you know if you only have a half hour you can't be perfect you're just kind of doing it fast and you're loose yeah so that's kind of the some of the story on some of the back paintings mm -hmm. bill yeah. kate you are a treasure and my favorite hoboken oh. artist thank you so much kate always love your main pictures oh. come visit soon <laughs> now here's another question for you bill um we love your paintings of flowers. I do, and and obviously everybody else does. What makes them special for you? What, like, how did that originate, that love of flowers for you? Uh, it's a good question. I, I grew up in Long Island. Uh, my boss is in Long Island. They say we're, we sound alike. But <laughs> um, before the marigolds grew in Long Island, I cut the grass. So I think I... There was, um, I started to learn about taking care of nature, mother nature, trimming the bushes. 
I didn't really do any planting. Uh, my mother always grew tomatoes, but I cut the lawn, and I would love to see the sprinkler going back mm -hmm. and forth, back and forth, and I always like the edge of the uh, cement next to the grass cleanly cut. Don't go on my grass, get <laughs> off of it. Um, so I think that's where it started. And um, today, I'll just say it to fast forward, similar to like George O'Keefe, it takes time to see a flower. It takes time to have a relationship. It takes time to, to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. And the more I find that the more that I look at a flower or an umbrella or whatever, things are revealed to me. And it's kind of being in a presence that you don't have unless you're paying attention. Mm, so the paying attention part of it, well, it's it's one of the joys of being an artist is that it really forces that in a person to just take yes. a must, you have to look. And uh, uh, so, well, when did you realize you first We'll go back to the past again. When did you realize that you wanted to be an artist? Was that always in you, or was there some point where you said, oh, no, that is the work I want to do? Well, I had very good mentors, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I went to school for advertising design, and I knew nothing about painting. But there, again, kind of things were presented to me. I learned about Andy Warhol, um, Rob, uh, Mr. Rosenquist, he gave a, a guest talk once at my college, uh -huh. uh, James Rosenquist. Um, I'll just say when it was time to go to college after high school, I wasn't going to be a lawyer or a dentist or a, mm -hmm. I went to art school only yeah. because growing up we always went to Florida <laughs> for vacation so I thought that's where you go for college too. Oh. And I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale and, oh. and the rest is history. Yeah. yeah, so that's where you studied and you never really wanted to be anything else. You were not going to be a dentist or yeah, that wasn't mm, a goal. I've always wanted to go to um, see Claude Monet's home but Mm. I'm I'm a little far that from that. I love Maine, but mm. um, uh, no, I don't know what else I could do. I mean, I can make a greeting card in five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to clean my paint brushes and make sure they're brand new for the next time oh. I use them. I don't know what else I would do. I love being a door greeter here, um, so. Well, you've found your calling, that's for sure. And uh, do you, do you, um, let me see, I have some questions that I wrote down just in case. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to ask you whether you, um, when you go outdoors to paint, do you have ideas of what you're going to do ahead of time? Do you have any intentions? Do you just sort of loosely think of something um, and then see what you find? How does it, how does it work? I mean, I know sometimes, you know ahead of time right. you're going for a certain thing. But right. in general, what, do you, what would you say? It's a good question. Um, um, I think it's better to go out, to go out for a walk without any preconceived ideas. So you could do that. Then you could go out with no preconceived ideas, but bring your pains. Mm. Then you could go out with your paints and know exactly what you want to paint. So you really have to see what works for you. I think I use both of those techniques. But um, of course, if I go out and I see something that speaks to me, I have to run home and get my supplies. Roger mm -hmm. Kelman, Bill, I'm sorry I won't be able to get to the Hoboken for the opening, but hope to get there while your paintings are still up. Thank you so much, Roger. Always great to see you. And we have a comment from Mr. Jack Silbert. Hey, Bill, when you moved to Hoboken, there was a very vibrant young arts and music scene. Did being in that community have much effect on your craft and development? To be honest with you, Jack, I think because I wasn't a part of that scene, I think it started to make me think, why am I not? <laughs> I must admit I've never been to Maxwell's. I, I, okay, you can crucify me, but I would go on the art studio tour, which is, used to be every 
first weekend in November, and this woman would say, "Bill, why aren't you on the tour? What's going?" Mm. So she kind of, she kind of made me um, open up, and that's kind of started it. Um, yeah, I, I I regret not being more of the art scene when I got here. Mm -hmm. I was part of there was the Oro Electric. That was kind of my introduction to poetry, music abstract thing abstract night abstract painting exhibitions hmm. so is that um when I, w w around what i would say was that, that was between 83 and 90. Oh, okay i missed that i've been here since 83. That scene. yeah so well um let's see what uh, well i'm gonna go back to my cheat sheet um, <laughs> About how long does it take you to do a painting? I know you kind of referenced that a little bit, but like what amount of time do you kind of think you're going to end up spending on a work when you start it? Do you have ideas about that? I'd love to know what other people think because if I do a painting very fast, I think I'm a fraud or I oh, think God, it's not worth anything. One. But I think as I've gotten older, I, I'm putting more time into each painting because I'm seeing and feeling more as I look. Um, hmm. Like this particular painting of the daffodils in the church garden. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I began, but I believe the window was kind of um, something about that window kind of spoke to me, hmm. or there was something in me that said, "Oh, a paint, a painting could maybe be begun there." But then there was this riot of color in the front, and I was very overwhelmed. Okay, slow down breathe and I remember a teacher always said Bill slow down slow down slow down um, you know you want to get all that energy out but um, it could be like the marigolds I knew I only had 20 minutes mm -hmm. and I think that's part of my history painting fast mm -hmm. but I think as I've gotten older I have a little more time now maybe uh -huh. you know not in youth but um, <laughs> uh, I like to spend more time when I paint but if all I can paint is for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. it still feels good. I agree with that. So um, let's see. Oh, I see this question here. Sorry. Roger. I, yeah. Um, Roger wants to know if we've if Bill's already answered whether uh, he paints in oil or acrylic. And yeah. And oh, th that's a great question, Roger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, th when I went to school in 95, I had a teacher that put those acrylics down don't use those acrylics now I must admit I have a nice set of acrylics at home <laughs> and I use them mm -hmm. they're easy they're fast uh, they don't well I was gonna say if you don't wash the brushes quickly they they destroy the brush but m most of the paintings if I'm not mistaken are all oil on canvas in here and also on wood something about wood uh, I love to pass someone's house here in Hoboken who might be throwing out some pieces of wood. Don't get me wrong, I don't pick up everything. But um, <laughs> something about the grain of the wood. Um, and I have not treated myself to Home Depot where I hear oh. there's there's a whole bunch of wood. Yeah, so a lot. Um, they have I that. hold myself back a little. Yeah. Don't hold yourself back uh, in what in what you do. Um, thank you. Do I have a do you have a favorite painting? Hi Eric, thank you so much for joining me. I remember when you and your son took that wonderful watercolor class. Thank you so much. That was so much fun in the walkway. Um If you could hold on. I'm gonna do I d I don't know if I have a favorite painting, but this is a um as you can the paintings are outside, but this is a still life painting. I I saw a painting by, and I think this is the director's art. He always he gave me oranges. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use fruit when people give me them in still lives. But I, and this is a teacup from, we have an estate sale usually on Saturdays and Sundays in the museum walkway, so please stop by. Um, I just love flowers and put it on a teacup. So I'll just say quickly, um, this I like this painting. I don't know if I have any favorite, but just quickly, that um, I saw a painting by Stuart Davis, who oh, kind of did yeah. very 
colorful abstract stuff towards the end of his life maybe he was born 1870 through 1960 and I said oh I want to do something like that a simplification of color kind of a little cubistic um, things were silhouetted and um, I really I really liked what I came up with mm -hmm. um, thank you Eric yeah so I, I kind of like this one. Oh, look, look at that. I want to put my bag on a tote bag. I want to <laughs> eventually get it like that. Um. So, Bill, this is leading into another question I have about um, artists who influence you. And, I mean, I know we all have, like, artists who are we really identify with and that are part of our, have been part of our practice, you know, for, uh, the like, in a kind of a fundamental way. But... Um, I know, and you and I have done this uh, on occasion, just looked at works by an artist, looked through a book or something like that, and then gone on to paint sort of in the, oh, in the mindset of that, the painting of that artist. And um, do you have artists that you in particular like to do that with, or does anyone sort of pop into your mind um, quickly when you think of someone that uh, who's work you admire and maybe would pick up a tip or two from? Um, that's a good question. I think I pick up tips from everybody. <laughs> um, I think as I've gotten older, like the Stuart Davis painting, I guess I'm becoming more open to trying new things. Mm. But I have, you know, you, you have influenced me. Everyone influences mm. me. Uh, we yeah. have a wonderful art class at the library with Liz. That has influenced me. Uh, Frank Hanavan was so kind enough to frame all these paintings in lattice stripping. Laura Alexander, she does these incredible portraits. She's influenced me. Mm. Um, and then just thinking, I we went to a Lois Dodd exhibition. Lois was born in Mount Clair, New Jersey. She also is a very um, involved painter with presence, and I've learned a lot from her in the last year mm -hmm. or two. And of course, my favorite is Fairfield Porter who paints in the moment, uh, who paints lushly, who uses color. Uh, I'm so grateful that I, I've known some of his family. And uh, Wolf Kahn I love, Jane Freilicher. I mean... So those are all artists with a particularly like warm, bright uh, color palette. Their, their colors are... Um, they, they tend to be... Oh, now I'm going to be stuck for words. But they, they do tend to be sort of warmish or, or uh, colorful. They're not the dark and sort of somber colors that you see in some paintings. So, and I know part of that is just because that, those, are, those paints are available now and easily purchased. But um, so that has influenced you, your color, your palette, and things like that. I have a, I have a good thought. I love that question because... In my kitchen, I have a still life wall, and one of the paintings is similar to this one, but it's called, um, it's about, it has carnations in it. Mm -hmm. And I painted it when my brother had just passed away in mm, the spring of 2015. And what's different about the painting is I painted it at night, and mm -hmm. the curtains were open. Yeah. So this still life of flowers is on a, a wooden, ledge lit by the lamp at the top but the background is black mm. and i just recently realized and it's okay not to you know just paint don't analyze your painting but i think when i see that painting now it reminds me that it was a very um it was a, a darker time for me mm -hmm. in creation i remember when i lost my brother or for anyone in my family for that matter you know i just i lost Am I a painter? What, mm. Should I be doing this? What's the use? But um, so I guess I think there are um, shifts in color as there might be shifts in my mood and in, in ev events in my life. Yeah. Was, was painting um, a solace for you when you were grieving for your brother? I mean, was that something that m soothed you? I I, I, not I I guess what I can say, what I remember is that 
I, I think I needed some downtime, and mm -hmm. I think people, my 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 cheering sec, my cheering folks always reminded me, you, you Bill, you're doing okay. You're yeah. a painter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard thing for a lot of painters to have moments when you struggle to find something to paint or the urge to paint, and when that those those spans of time, however long or short, where you just feel. Uh, I, I, I just don't have the motivation. What what am I doing? Who am I? And I, I, I it sounds like you experience that as well. I have I like that question. I have some thoughts. One is that I read a quote this morning or last night. I think it was by Pearl Buck who said, I think he wrote the, a famous book. I'm blanking out on the name, but he said something about. Don't wait for inspiration. Mm -hmm. Just get on the horse and go. <laughs> and I, I really relate to that. Yeah. But um, I think this relates, which was I took a walk last night, as I usually do, and I saw a window. It looked like someone, um, and there are two paintings like this in the show. It looks like someone moved out of an apartment. It's on second and first in Gar Bloomfield and Garden. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Bloomfield and second. And uh, it, the place looks blank. But they have a beautiful lamp in the window. The lamp is yellow. Mm -hmm. the, the, the aura around the lamp in the window is kind of whitish gray. And the p building was just painted like a dark blue. And it had the fire, extingu the, uh, fire escape poles. So it's mm -hmm. just this, this scene that I saw. And I was like, oh my gosh. I wanted to paint it, but I really needed to stay off social media sometimes, <laughs> and I needed to get to bed early because I had a. But in my mind, I painted it, mm. um, and I'm blanking out on the question. Other than, um, if I could, I would express it whenever. I, someone on the the call, I believe, said, "When you're inspired, do it because you mm. don't know when it's going to come back." I I regret not doing it but i did need to do some self-care get to bed early but um anyway uh, oh. this is a liz is saying hi bill thanks for the plug for our art class at the library and little known fact bill is a wonderful art teacher as well as a terrific artist thank you so much liz i love that painting you have on your little <laughs> icon yes i do love to teach i i, I love to teach and I'm a good teacher because people have yes. been a good teacher to me. And mm -hmm. you don't give what you 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 um, what you give in life, you get back. So, so Bill, well then, how how would someone who wanted to take a class with you get in touch with you? My number is two zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's uh, against the rules. Okay. You could always Google my uh, my. Website is BillCurran.net or I'm on Instagram, Bill Curran Art. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. No, I wanted to. Um, and um, well, I've got a, a few kind of silly questions, but if you could be any color, what would you be? Would you? What is your favorite? Or oh, oh okay. Yes. The, the, thank are. you for the the plug, Rand. BillCurran.net. I think uh -huh. I like this blue. Uh huh. Um, but um. I'll just digress for a minute, and I think my favorite color, although I don't know if I would want to be it, is teal blue, mm. uh, which is kind of, um, I'm not sure if I'm seeing it, but I had an aunt, Aunt Evelyn, who passed away on July 4th, 1984. Mm. I, I miss her. She always gave me a teal shirt for my <laughs> birthday or a sweater for Christmas. Oh. And if you... Well, I was going to say, I used to just use teal in my still lifes as a tablecloth. That has changed, but I do love, I am a big fond, fond, I'm fond of the color teal. Mm -hmm. I am too. So, um, all right, when you go out to paint, like mm -hmm. plein air, mm -hmm. do you have a, a certain like system or of materials or paints that you would like to have with you is there a, a you know a few brushes that uh must you must have and then maybe a few extra that are kind of worth trying that kind of thing uh, how do you set yourself up to go mm -hmm. out to, to paint 
Well, I, that's a good question. I think the answer to that is one always needs to kind of just find that answer themselves because you, um, just to backtrack, last night this window, brand, brand new painted, maybe it's not um, rented yet, but the light was on and it, I, it just had a presence to me. By the time I said, we won't go paint it, Bill, you got to get to bed early, I said, well, we could just do it in black and white. Mm -hmm. um, and what that huh. would mean for me is um, you take a shoebox, mm -hmm. and it's a shoebox with a, a lid that closes, and on the, the, the box, part of the box that opens the lid, you squeeze some white paint. Mm -hmm. I what I would have done is squeeze oh. blue paint, white paint, yellow paint, and black paint and um, I like all kinds of brushes uh, I've used q-tips when I only have 15 minutes to do a painting mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of um, it's trial and error but I would have stood on the on the street last night with this box mm -hmm. wondering if people thought I was a weirdo but um, that's okay um, um, we need more creative people in this world and I would kind of you know respond to the visual that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I've got the canvas in this shoe box with my paints uh -huh. and I've got my little palette here and um, and it's so much fun to paint in the dark or <laughs> you really can't see exactly what you're doing and you got to do it to experience it. Yeah, but that sounds like, so that keeps you flexible if you can keep a very simple set of tools ready to I mean, that is something, a little box like that is something you could have by the door. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, and you just so reminded good. me of something. I think Van Gogh um, did drawings for two or three years straight before he touched color, mm. or before he painted. And just to um, put a word out on um, July 15th, mm -hmm. we are having our plain air. Oh. Yes. Plain Air Artist Walk. Uh, mm -hmm. Maggie will be one of the uh, artists yes. participating along with Frank Hanavan and Patrick. I'm so sorry, Patrick. I'm forgetting your name. Mm -hmm. Patrick will be doing watercolors. Um, mm -hmm. Patrick Neal, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, Frank Hanavan will be doing uh, acrylic. Maggie will be doing whatever Maggie does. I probably oil. Oil. <laughs> yes. And I'll be also doing something. Everyone will have their specific location sort of around the museum. So we're, it's going to kind of be a three hour ish tour. But everyone who comes on the tour will get a, a taste of how our artists do it and paint plain air. So please join us. I believe the uh, ticket link is already on the website and look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's gonna be a good good experience for for the artists as well, I think. So, um, so do you have you have some slides on hand for the? the I do the sh uh, f from the show. So I hope you, I didn't pull you off course. No, you did not. I wanted to just I was just getting curious about. I know they're there. I haven't seen a lot of them, so I'm I'm eager to like okay. see what you got. Um, one, one, I think the first the first few ones are in the studio. So okay. you'll. I remember I was, someone who was going to make a video of me. It's called "What Aristotle Said." Mm. It's by David Gross. Um, it's that's I've seen it. It's charming. Go look for it. He he said, "Don't clean up. Leave your place <laughs> as it is." And he was so right. Um, this is my backyard. This is my wonderful landlady's backyard. The the porch in the front with the slide. I painted that many times, even in the snow. Uh, the rose bush, you might say, is kind of uh, next to that two wet spots. But as you can see, it's um, I see from I see a vast amount of backyards, and I'm I'm so grateful for this. Um, it's really a, a godsend and a blessing to come home after a long day and just open my window and chill. Mm. So that's uh, one of my views that I paint from. Mm -hmm. I've seen the winter ones from that too. The the you, some of your really nice paintings. The, and the tables. The tables. I love those. So oh, that looks familiar. Um, this is just a. Um, um, I usually don't use black. Um, black can be made if you don't know from orange and blue, 
but I can be lazy sometimes. Um, this is do. this is a painting that I did of balloons, and I didn't like it, so I used it as a palette. But um, uh, this is neither here nor there. But thank you very much, Carter. These are some uh, painting paints that a friend in Hoboken gave me, and I still use them. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, so I just like that as a in studio shot. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was, um, we have, um, I'm glad I can put a p plug in for our events. Uh, every Saturday uh, for a while now, we have a pop-up market at the museum on Saturdays, usually from 1 to 6. And this past Saturday, there was a woman who was selling, uh, forgive me, I don't recall exactly what else she sold, but she sold little bouquets, mm. and they were only $8.00. So I treated myself to a bouquet, and I couldn't wait. Well, I waited until I got home, and I put them in the vase, and um, I did the study. And this is, um, when I have leftover paint, I like to not waste it, either cover a canvas to get another painting started, or just make marks on the page. Sometimes I'll cut these out as greeting cards or I'll write Happy Valentine's Day if they were red or mm -hmm. I have a cousin who loves purple. But um, uh, so that was the paint. This painting is on plywood, which I got from the hardware store. I just love. I like a little bigger, but that's kind of the shape and size. And again, that's on my window. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know a way to dry your paintings when you finish with an oil painting, you can put it in the sun and it dries quicker. I learned that in Maine when I go to um, artist retreats. This window may be open and I'll lean it in the edge and mm. the sun will dry it with the fresh air. What is that dark, the darker purple um, in, in that grid of, the, yes, those? I think that's magenta. Oh, okay. I, I could be wrong. Um, that's really a beautiful color. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Um, another palette, I'll just say quickly, as I've gotten older, I, um, I mean, we could leave this open to the audience. As I've gotten older, I've gotten into ab abstraction, although mm -hmm. I, what, is, what does this look like to everybody before I tell you what I see? What does that look like to you, the yellow, what is that? What is that? Does anyone see? Ah. Can anyone, it starts with a C. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm be, it's I, a canary. That's what I was going to say. It's a bird. Do I, you see? Yes, I see the canary. Does anyone else want to... How about this abstract shape? I shouldn't say. Well, no. it's abstract. Yeah. It's a whale. Yes. So everything's, you know, things, all the shapes kind of have imagery for me, at least. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been very exciting. I see that you're mixing colors on this palette. Are those... Um, uh, I mean, do you often mix, mix your colors, and do you do it on the palette, or do you do it in the painting? I mean, it, it, they, those are all approaches. I like they're... that question. Uh, thank you, Liz. I really like this. I think, again, which I've noticed that has come from my work as I've gotten older is um, I went to see a Lois Dodd exhibition recently in, in Connecticut, and um, what I noticed that I did when I got home was that I have these wonderful views from my um, windows of uh, City Hall. And um, when I looked out the window, I saw that uh, the building was, say, a brown. Mm -hmm. And instead of mixing a little brown and put it on the canvas, I made a lot of brown. <laughs> And then the window, like uh, the one I was describing, was maybe a, a five number grade. So I made a lot of, so sometimes I paint with a lot of, like this, I, I, think, the, I think the simpler the color, the better. Mm. And sometimes the more you can just kind of fill it in. But there's, again, it's how you, it's how you find your process and mm -hmm. I guess I could do it both ways. But I, I just love sometimes what's left on a palette. I think that's, yes, I agree. Very imaginative, the ca canary in the <laughs> well. Thank you, Eric. And they go together so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, so that's the still life oh. of the, the, the painting. Yeah. I think technically I, in the painting, I maybe, I, if I would have, I maybe should have, um, 
got a little more of the flower. I think I cropped too much. But, um, and if you notice, this is a large 18 by 24 canvas just with filled in paints. And mm -hmm. what I've done, I don't have any, but I've been uh, taking those abstract landscapes and adding boats to them or uh -huh. something to enhance the abstract landscape. Yeah. But that's for another exhibition. Yeah. So, ooh, that's this beautiful. starts the paintings. Okay. This is a painting probably done, uh, I think, after this exhibition I saw. So I made a, some kind of a black from maybe a blue and a red and a yellow. That's another way to get a black. This was in the very early morning, 536. Wow. And I was in the bathroom. This is the building across the street in the curtains. This is a geranium plant, which is um, not in bloom now, which I adore because it blooms in the winter, and I'm so glad that I caught it at that time. And um, I worked on that painting maybe some t between an hour to two hours. I think this um, redder part up top is from the original painting. Sometimes I'll paint over paintings mm -hmm. that I don't feel are successful. So it's um, it's all a, a, a joint collaboration. So this this actually answers a question I was thinking about, which is, you know, uh, about uh, handling a piece of the uh, painting so that certain other parts can come forward. Obviously, you know, if you had painted in detail all of the, the building that was behind it, um, you wouldn't be as in, you wouldn't have this glorious uh, shadow of uh, the geraniums coming forward. So that really made a nice balance between the figure and the ground. And Thank you. It's a it's a difficult thing to do because you know the tendency is to see it and want to put it in. So that process of elimination can be really important and, and you do it really well. Oh thank you. We had a comment from Roger. He said very nice. Mm -hmm. um, you, what, th what, what comes up right now is when do you know a painting is finished? Well oh. um, you know a painting is finished when you know you're covered in paint and <laughs> the phone rings or um, um, Again, it's you learn your process. Mm -hmm. You could use a timer for 15 minutes and you stop just to, to have a reference of, I did this in 15 minutes versus mm -hmm. next week, maybe you try a half hour. That's a great system. But uh, lately, I've been doing it until my juices uh, die down, but they haven't been. Well, that's great. I, I, I heard someone say once that a painting is finished when you've seen everything about the subject that you want to see, mm -hmm. which I thought was a nice... Mm. One other way to do it. I mean, mm. I, I don't think that is the only way, but it mm. was an interesting little comment. Yes. Uh, so when you're finally tired of looking, you're done. <laughs> oh, those colors are beautiful. That's the ah, daffodils, the, the church yeah. garden. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And that's from this year? That's from that. I That is from... No, I think um, all, I will point out all the paintings are, most are from 2020 to 2023. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I must admit when I was doing these daffodils, I was like, I didn't know how I was going to take care of it. So you do it slowly. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't put the red and then put a white. So, so you just build. Everything is a building. Mm -hmm. You see the lime green next. Yeah. That was from maybe something there originally, and that blue. So it's all a build, build up from a build up. Uh, and that is kind of a breathtaking decision to say, well, that wasn't in the idea or it's not in the painting I'm looking at, but there it is and it looks great, so I'm leaving it. And yeah, it's hard to leave yeah, things. Yeah. Like it's like, it's hard sometimes when to zip the lip. <laughs> That's it. So. This oh. is the only painting that's. You like this one? I love it. What do you like about it? I love its spareness, but mm. I love how there's um, there is some texture in there. So the color has some variegation. Mm. It's not completely flat, but it's subdued. And then you know, I love how the 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 flat quality, a somewhat flat quality mm. of the sky, lets the building sort of come forward and have its moment to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm about these browns and reds and, mm. and, uh, and then of course 
I love this suggestion of a, a, a wire mm. or that, that arc there is so beautiful, especially the way it echoes the curve of the moon on the other mm. side of the painting. Oh, so I like that. That's uh, really, yeah. Hi, Melissa. Oh, <laughs> Bill, the daffodil <laughs> painting is very Fairfield I Porter. Agree. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. I love your little picture and miss you. <laughs> Melissa was our PR person. Oh. Thank you, Melissa. Um, this is a, um, um, initially my show was going to be a little darker, but I'm glad I, see, that's why you have to put out all your work to kind of see like an overview. Mm -hmm. This is a view from my window. Uh, this is a church on Garden Street that I see. Um, they have since cut down some of these trees, um, but something about the church roof. I don't know, it just talks to me. Mm -hmm. There's a section in the show with maybe five paintings of th of just that subject. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know the abstraction or, um, I'm not very religious, but um, you don't know that's a church, but um, yeah. But there is something religious about painting no matter what. You mm. really have to relate to the world in a kind of spiritual way in order to be that uh, that engaged in in an art, in a creative process, I think, and that's just. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love this painting. I love the palette. Mm -hmm. I really like the way the brown branches kind of come forward, but then they're obviously in front of the the um, the roof, which is more in the background, and then that that sort of brown purple part mm -hmm. of the roof is just exciting. Ah, oh, you have a collector. Well, another one, I should say. We have a, a message from Melissa, which says, I'm also an avid collector of a Bill Curran Originals. Mm. Yes, you are. Thank you very much. And so can you be, too. Come <laughs> to the exhibition. Yes, come and collect. This has an interesting story. May oh, I share it? Sure. Um, I live by City Hall. They have a community garden. Um, it's not so much cooking these days, but these were flowers last year. I don't know what kind of flower, please clue in if you know what kind of flower, but it had just been on the street and I, I love that color. Mm -hmm. It was just, so I put it in a plastic cup. This is my bathroom. That is the tile above the toilet. And the lighting is quite nice in my bathroom. Any mm -hmm. place can be your studio. Um, and that's pretty much the, the story, but um, I think the color was even a little more more vibrant, but um, it might grow up to be an azalea. I'm not really sure what it is, mm. but I love the tiles also. Mm. The sort of subtle but there texture mm. and color shifts that are in mm. there, and they really make a beautiful background for that lovely pink, that magenta color. Which, yeah, it, and if you notice, if you don't mind me saying this to everyone, artists and no artists. Thank you, Liz. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. These leaves are not perfect. I mean, this is a little schmear over here. And, you know, uh, so being an artist is not, be I mean, I would have liked to maybe have all of them been green and very botanical, but that's what not, it's not about that. I think it's about it expressing mm -hmm. yourself. And I kind of like this dark blue somehow mm -hmm. with the, the peachy pink there, and and that's yes. the magic of painting. Yeah, it is. And I just want to point out too that the, the glass and uh, there, Kate, we're on the same page. Um, that the painting of the glass and the illusion of the the stem through the water is just mm. lovely, just lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Ooh, this is a close up. Thank you, Roger. Love the shadow. Um, uh, this this is a painting that um, I wasn't. It's it's a small. It's four by six. It is oil on canvas paper, which was the way I started to paint prior mm -hmm. to us working together in mm -hmm. the garden on canvas. Mm -hmm. I would take a, my little box, and this is around Sixth and Bloomfield. I think there may be two paintings underneath there. You see how this yellow mm -hmm. window ledge is really kind of, well, anyway, um, so that's what that is. And it was put in 
to the, you should see my poster outside, my, my, my marquee poster. It's beautiful. You can frame it. It has this painting in it, so I said, let me put it in the show. Mm -hmm. So this is very small. It'll be by the sign-in table. Please uh, see it. It's four by six. It's uh -huh. oil on paper. Um, it's your greeter. It's my greeter. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of flowers, but it was a. I love flower boxes on a windowsill in Hoboken. Mm, there's Can't a lot of them, too. That. Yeah. So, oh, that's a beauty. These were flowers that I purchased. Um, I, I'm ashamed to say this, but <laughs> um, over by Target, there's a food store. Maybe it's called. Um, it's one of the, I don't usually shop there, but I went in there this particular day. And when you went in, it, it greets you with the floral section. And I saw these flowers mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, the painting is right here. I actually have an envelope on the back of the painting with these dried flowers in it. Oh. I didn't want to throw them out. But um, the color, the mm. color was it was just calling me. Mm. And I remember I didn't paint it right away, but um, I got it before it was too late. These were two maybe that fell. Mm. Um, this was really um, a mistake. It was really a seahorse uh, on the glass mm. that I didn't really detail, but it almost mirrors the color of the flower. So I like it. Mm -hmm. That's in my kitchen. The, oh, that that's the back, the... The setting for this. Painting. Yeah, that's in. Yes. Mm -hmm. I should explain to people who are watching this that Bill and I are sitting in front of a screen that is showing us the paintings that you're seeing on your screen as you're watching it. So when we kind of dart towards you, it's we're looking at a painting and we're actually responding to it. So I just want to let you know that's what that's what you're seeing. So, oh, that's beautiful. Bill, that background, that un, mm. that that kind of constructed background is mm. just really, really mm. exciting. Mm. Thank you. That's that's right here. Let's that see. was kind of tough because, mm. um, again, the construction, what's in the foreground, what's in the background, mm -hmm. I don't have too much of a space. I think that's actually four by twelve inches, and uh, I love chairs. Something about chairs. Um, chairs I don't know they they speak to me but um and there was enough color to just get just excite the artist in me and mm -hmm. again that's that window in the in the garden in the yes, garage now, and yeah. they have a beautiful vegetable gar garden yeah it was just kind of a building up of a scaffolding I heard that once by a favorite artist that she builds a scaffolding of marks mm. on the canvas and from there, she has an interaction or a dialogue, and there she'll take it to the next level. Man, I love, love hearing about other artists' process and how they get just from one moment in a painting to the next and, and on and on through it. It's just so interesting because everybody's different. We all jump. We all in different can learn. Ways. Yeah. So, well, Bill, this has just been fabulous. Oh, and thank you so I'm much. Just, I'm not at all surprised. We've had these wonderful conversations all along, and uh, this has just been great. And, uh, well, I guess it's moment for me to say, come on out to the Hoboken <laughs> Historical Museum and see Bill's gorgeous paintings in person. They're even lovelier than they are on the screen, and I can tell you because I just saw them. And uh, it's been great, Bill. Put her there, pal. Thank you so <laughs> okay. much, fellow painter Maggie. Yes, yes. was indeed a great show thank you guys for the uh, the tour and uh, the opening is on Sunday it's not here on the on the postcard but yeah Sunday from 2 to 5 and uh, the show goes through August 6th and there's is going to be a fantastic uh, plein air um, event on July 15th is that it yes okay I got it right um, so we'd like to thank the New Jersey uh, 
Hudson County uh, Office of Cultural Affairs and Historic, oh gosh, I don't remember the full name. Look at that logo. It's just <laughs> Hudson County. Uh. We thank them for supporting our upper gallery. Um, please come also when you come to the museum, uh, take in our exhibit in the main gallery, the, the fires, Hoboken, 1978 to 1982. It's a, a coverage of, of, of a rough time in Hoboken's history, curated by uh, guest curator Christopher Lopez. It's very powerful and, um, and um, compelling, um, really, really not to be missed. Um, we'd like to thank our Shipyard Circle. They are our, our top donors at the museum. Uh, a number of them are our tr trustees who volunteer to help us out. So they're, they're not only uh, supporting us financially, but supporting us with their efforts. Um, we, we, we love all of our volunteers and all of our donors, but uh, the Shipyard Circle gets a screen at the end of the show. What can I tell you? It's, that's how we do it. Um, uh, we've got Hoboken Talks coming up tomorrow. Derek Ladson is going to be interviewed by our, our new uh, communications uh, director, Vera Sirota. And uh, in, in about two or two weeks, I guess, we'll have uh, Coach Buddy Matthews will be uh, talking with uh, Stu Chiricella. And that, that should be a fantastic show as well. So don't miss it. Please um, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Um, it's the best way to find out what's going on and what we're doing. Um, of course, any, you know, we do keep up with our, with our uh, content on YouTube. So if you'd like to comment, after the fact, if you're not watching it live, but you're watching us historically, um, just reach out. We'll, we'll, we're happy to, to, to talk with you and uh, share, share these videos with your friends. Um, but that's it from the Hoboken Historical Museum. Thanks again, Maggie and Bill. And Thank you. Uh, everybody, Thank come, you. come on by and check out the great um, show. Bye-bye.